time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. We are continuing our 49ers roster countdown with number 37, safety, Tarvarius Moore. Now, a uh, little known fact, Tarvarius is the only current Tarvarius in the NFL as of last year. That could change this year. I don't know if somebody drafted had that uh, name. But whenever I search it up, I usually don't have to type in the second name. Uh, but anyway, he is – man – Talk about a journey, um, whether you go back to Quitman High School, small town Mississippi, had two stoplights in his town just on the uh, co- uh, right off the border of Alabama, south of Meridian. Um, great food down there, but very, very small town and had to take a quite a journey to get to college and then the NFL once he got to the NFL, got moved around a lot. And once it finally seemed like he found his role, tears his Achilles. Now he's in no man's land. Um, where's he going to go with this? Well, we're going to dive through all that. Let's get into the nitty gritty here. Jersey number 33, uh, six foot two, 200 pounds. I mean, big, this is a big safety. Um, he is an athletic specimen to say the least might be the fastest player on the 49ers, not named Danny gray. Dude is he fly fly. Um, did not get invited to the combine. But ran back to back, clocked four three two forties at pro day. This dude speed, speed, speed. He's only twenty five. He's going into the fourth year of his deal, but because again he tore his Achilles last year, last year didn't count um, for an accrued season. So what happens on the rookie deal? He still has two years left under contract this year and next year on his rookie deal because of that injury. So he's entering his fifth season, only twenty five somehow. I don't know how the math works out, but uh, glad to have him because he provides something nobody else on this team does, and that is top-tier speed and ball skills from the free safety position. Now, the 49ers do rotate their safety, so it's not a true free safety, strong safety. It's pretty much split um, where they like to lean one as the free, but in today's NFL with all the motions and jet sweeps, it kind of negates that a little bit. Um, But anyway... Let's go back to his high school days. Okay, Quitman High School, the Missis- in Mississippi, the Panthers. He is the cousin of famed uh, NBA player, second overall pick NBA player, Antonio McDice, um, who also played at Quitman. Um, so very small school, but there's some top-tier athletes that come out of there, no doubt about it. He's a kinesiology major and had to go to Pearl River Community College before he could transfer to Southern Miss. So he had quite the journey, uh, to say the least. Now, again, grew up in a super, super small town and couldn't wait to get to the big city as a kid. Always wanted to be a part of that. He did earn the second team class 3A All-State Honors as a senior. He was a player, which is, you know, a, there's not a lot of info out there because he wasn't a heralded recruit. But how much of him going to community college was to get his grades up, things like that, no, I, I couldn't find anything. Um, and so... It, We'll see there. Now, while he was at Quitman, he led his team to three straight state title game appearances. Um, first team All-State uh, pick as a sophomore in college at the community college before he transferred. Honorable mention, All-Conference USA, whenever he's with Southern Miss. And it's, it's pretty simple speed, man. Speed, length, and he's got to build on him. He's got some big hits, Problem is consistency, right? So if we look at his tape and kind of the good and the bad in his metrics, the 4-3-240 is just uncanny for a person that's 6'2", 200 pounds. Like his speed, straight line speed. Three cones, great. Six nine five, not great, but good for somebody that size. Um, 38 and a half inch vertical. The dude's a specimen. He's an absolute freak. Now, he was drafted in the third round by the 49ers, picked number 95th, 95 overall in 2008. Now, he was played out of position early, which really pissed me off. One of the worst issues of the early Shanahan regime was just playing people out of position, thinking they're smarter than everybody else and moving Solomon Thomas around or moving him around. and It just doesn't work, and they wasted a year and a half of this kid's career at corner, which he never got snaps at. Then they moved him back to safety where he should have been the whole entire time um, and did well. Um, now, I talked about his big hits. The problem with him, he missed tackles way too much, and that's kind of an issue that I have with his tape. Uh, you know, if we dive into it, he has a 12.4 missed tackle percentage rate as a career. That's bad, but it's worse than that because 
to get a missed tackle, you got to touch the running back. And, man, several times throughout his career, he just comes flying up full speed without, you know, breaking down and getting under control. He doesn't even get a hand on him. So the 12.4 missed tackle percentage rate is high. I would argue it's much higher than that. Um, but he does get a lot of solo stops, which is really, really nice. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll say this as well. You, you look at kind of what he's done in his career, even though he, you know, moved around a little bit, could have had one of the most historic plays in 49ers history with that interception in the Super Bowl. You know, I, I was lucky enough to be at that game, and I thought that was it. You know, we were going, to, we we're in the fourth quarter. He gets the interception. The 49ers all get into the end zone. It was incredible. I was so excited, and then everything just kind of went to crap after that. But that should have won the game. That should have been it. Now, he did tear his Achilles last year in June. Um, which is rough, right? Because Achilles injuries for secondary players, not great. Uh, the good news is he's very, very young, and he's back fully. The 49ers are not taking it easy. They're not babysitting. They're like, nope, he's back. He's full speed. He worked exclusively with the second teamers in minicamp and OTAs at free safety position. So th that's kind of where he is. He's got to earn his spot. There's no doubt about it. Now, if we look at what he's done for the 49ers, he played in 50 games, started 12. Um, he's got six pass breakups, uh, two forced fumbles, and, yeah, tackles, a little over 100 tackles, uh, tackle for loss and interception. So he's been productive when he's in there, and he flashes. The problem is, and I'm not sure you want him as an every-down safety. I don't think that's his role. I don't think that's going to be his role, especially with Jimmy Ward. You got Hufunga. You know, what do you do? Uh, you got George Odom, who you just paid a lot of money. I'd put all of those guys ahead of him in the draft chart. Now the question changes to, do you allow, do you keep four safeties? Ah, that's going to be a tough question with the D linemen, with the O linemen. 49ers don't usually put a precedent or a premium on safeties. So he's going to have to prove it. Now, the reason why I have him 37, even though there's a question mark he even makes his team, it's because if he does make the team, he has a very clear to find role. And I think that's as the dime player um, on third and long, on obvious passing situations. This is a guy that can come in and give you meaningful snaps on crucial plays. Third and long. This guy can close it out because he will be that back kind of range free safety guy that the 49ers have started messing around with the last two years under D'Amico Ryans. Um, sorry, just last year. Um, they did it a little bit before Salah left. And now, so like, it, it's, I, I really hope with today's NFL and the way things are kind of moving to more of a passing league, it just makes too much sense. I, I really think that it will work. Um, I really, really do. Now, back to this whole idea of him staying under contract for two more years. Again, this should be the last year of his deal. But because he didn't play at all last year, um, now he's got another year. Here's why that's important. Jimmy Ward is a free agent next year. Jimmy Ward was talking just recently on Instagram, several comments, that he will be flirting with free agency. He wants to see what he can get paid. And Jimmy Ward talks, man. He, if he feels disrespectful, disrespected, he's going to act. So if that's the case, it does make keeping Tarverius Moore much more attractive because you don't want to go into next year not having, you know, either one of them. That, that's a problem, I think. Um, so anyway, so uh, kind of summarize. He's got some issues. Tackling, pursuit angles, big time problem. Speed, ball skills, that's why he makes this roster. Special teams, that's why he makes this roster. Um, he's already back at it full swing, as I said. But if you look at his special teams, listen to these. 2020, he had 230 special team snaps. 2019, 364. 2018 324 so this is somebody that can come in and help with special teams because you want your special teams units usually comprised of linebackers safeties running backs because they are big fast and can kind of do everything and so he's got a role here i think he makes the roster i really i think he makes the roster i think they keep four safeties and you make him go dime and special teams and you utilize him there now, the one issue that I would say is, even if he does get cut, doesn't mean he will not come back. Um, so we'll have to pay attention to that. But I'm telling you right now, if he is on this roster, he is getting snaps. That speed 
on the back end with that type of body and ball skills, it's a premium and nobody else, nobody else has that um, in this safety. Day. Not even Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward's incredible. And I love Jimmy. I think he's one of the best safeties in the NFL, but ball skills, not on the charts. Um, whereas this kid has it. So I think he just plays that dime roll, special teams, and if something does happen to Jimmy, you put him in there at free safety and you're okay. Uh, they, the, the amount of snaps that this kid has, you got to trust him. So I um, want to say thank you to Josh and Anthony, the executive producers of this entire series. All the research they do is incredible, and we're just going to keep counting them down.